Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Are XRP holders going to be in trouble as a result of the litigation going on between the SEC uh, versus Ripple and more specifically for those XRP holders that are uh, that are seeking to intervene in the case with, with John Deaton? Would they be, be sanctioned? Well, I've got uh, opinions from two lawyers in this case uh, on this topic that I'm going to share with you. Um, and it's interesting food for thought. Apparently, there have been a ton of concerned uh, XRP holders uh, th 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 just, just contacting John Deaton, Attorney John Deaton, uh, endlessly uh, asking that question of late since uh, that topic came up within the community on social media, specifically Twitter here. Now, uh, hopefully at this point everybody is aware, and in, in case you're not, to uh, just catch you up to speed, uh, I mean, well... I, I can only help you with so much, so I'm assuming you understand that the SEC is suing Ripple. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume you know that much and why, okay? Uh, but John Deaton is an, is an attorney, uh, not on Ripple's side, not on the SEC side. Uh, he's an XRP holder himself, and he thinks that what the SEC is doing is disgusting, and he believes, and I agree with him, that XRP holders' interests are not being sufficiently um, uh, you know, defended, let's say, in this case, they're they're because uh, and, and that makes sense too. Why you know, the SEC's position you probably know what it is at this point, and then Ripple, uh, how could they possibly uh, you know defend every single third party developer building on top of the XRP ledger? Because it, Ripple doesn't have any special special permissions over the XRP ledger, or know all the developers building on top of the XRP ledger. It's sufficiently decentralized, and so XRP holders. Like, we feel like we're being attacked by the SEC because they're claiming that XRP, just by the nature of it existing, is a security of Ripple. That's ridiculous. That's absurd, obviously. And so it makes sense that uh, have uh, have XRP holders uh, represented by John Deaton uh, in the case here. So that's what we're, we're talking about. But then there's a question because there's, I think at this point, the latest number I saw, I believe it's over 17,000 XRP holders have signed up with Deaton to, to be represented um, as, as interveners in this case. And so I think this is where, where everything started. Uh, this is attorney Jesse Hines, who yesterday was sharing uh, his opinion. So um, I'm just going to provide everything that uh, he shared on this topic and, um, and, and then share what John Deaton had to say specifically on this topic. But I believe that this is where perhaps some of the concern originated. Um, and so uh, here, here we go. This is what attorney Jesse Hines said. Uh, okay, let's try to break this down so people can calm down. Sorry I've been too busy for full responses. Uh, this action by XRP investors uh, was brought claiming that they were unnamed defendants. A defendant in a lawsuit is the person that is being sued. This is very important. The SEC's argument is that the XRP investors don't have standing to intervene for many reasons, including constitutional bars. I can't see the SEC losing this one. In my opinion, take it for what it's worth, too many, nothing, he says, the SEC have both law and logic on its side. And before people go crazy, this isn't a knock on attorney Deaton. I believe he knows that he is fighting a losing argument, but in his opinion, this is what needs to be done, and I respect him for that fact. With that said, the SEC is 100% right in saying XRP investors are essentially seeking to compel the SEC to bring an enforcement action against XRP investors, which I will get to. If you don't know what he's talking about there, don't worry, I'm gonna, we're going to break this down further because John Deaton, uh, he, he does cover <clears throat> just a moment. Uh, but anyway, Jesse Hines now continues. Many people have taken this as a threat, but it's not. It's exactly what the XRP investors are trying to do. You see, if the XRP investors win their motion to intervene, everyone who signed that petition will be a defendant in a lawsuit brought by the SEC. <clears throat> Meaning, those people are literally being sued by the SEC and not seeing any relief for uh, relief or counterclaims against the SEC. And so that was in the afternoon yesterday at 3.09 p.m. And then about, um, when was this one? I think it was... Where's the time? Oh, here we go. So yeah, uh, six six hours later, he added a, a little extra tweet here and wrote, this tweet needs a correct. Um, it's only the ones who are named defendants unless uh, if the court allows for the whole class to be added to the lawsuit. Um, and, and so upon reading that, I initially took that as, okay, well, this, assuming that's accurate, then 
uh, it wouldn't be all of the 17,000 plus that would be named as defendants. And so he did go back and add that six hours later. Now, here's what John Deaton had to say uh, exactly on this topic. To XRP holders, I have more than a few direct messages from people asking whether it's possible that if we are successful in a motion to intervene and then lose the underlying case, if sanctions would be ordered against XRP holders. First, there is currently, I'm sorry, there are currently six named proposed interveners. I have alleged, along with those six named interveners and all others similarly situated, the 17,000-ish people uh, that have signed up to join are not officially in the case. The six named interveners are not yet in the case for that matter. I have informed the court that I represent a putative class of 12,000 plus, and he notes it has grown since then. Um, if we win the motion to intervene, then that doesn't mean everyone that signed up is a defendant in the case. In order to be a defendant in the case, the judge would have to certify a class, i.e. class action. Before she did that, people would have an opportunity to choose to be in the class or not. You would have the choice. Um, regarding sanctions, sanctions are only ordered by the judge, not the SEC. Unfortunately, some people are now under the impression that the SEC can punish them and issue sanctions against them for signing up. This is not true. A judge would only be considering uh, sanctions if the SEC asked for sanctions against XRP holders. The SEC would have to publicly ask, ask for sanctions against the retail investors they are sworn to protect. Think about that, guys. Think about this. Um, so assuming that's correct, and I have no reason to believe that's not, in order for uh, the, uh, if, and if I'm understanding this correctly, I think I am, uh, in order for any of these 17,000-ish XRP holders to be in trouble, uh, the SEC would have to say, hey, we want to go after them. And again, these are the people they're sworn to protect. Can you imagine the optics of that? I mean, the optics of this are already horrendous for the SEC. You, th you think they want to make it even worse? Because I don't know how you, like, I know I've said this before, like, I don't know how they're, they can reasonably, do, like, with a straight face, make a lot of the claims they're making, but this one would be the most over the top. Because you know, their mission statement as an agency is to protect the investors. And I don't think they're doing that, of course, but my gosh, to literally come and say, no, we are legally coming after you? Can you imagine? Whoa, like that would just be just a whole new level of over the topness. And so anyway, John Deaton continues. Not sure Ginsler wants that publicly. Uh, that uh, I'm sorry, not sure Ginsler wants that publicity. And of course, Ginsler, he's referencing Gary Ginsler, who is the new SEC chair. So he's the guy running the whole show here. Anyway, John continues. But even if the SEC hypothetically wanted to ask for something so absurd, only the judge could order sanctions against anyone. Ask yourself this question. Do you really think a judge is going to order sanctions against XRP holders? Why? Because we asked to intervene to protect our interests? That would mean that in this case, the judge says, yes, I agree with you, and I will allow you to intervene to protect your interests, but then later turns around and issues sanctions against the same people that she agreed had a right to intervene in the first place? So guys, look, you can see where we go with this. The SEC would have to push for this, and then the judge would have to say, oh yeah, of course, we want that. That sounds hot. Let's do that. That's fire. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> that seems just infinitely unlikely. It'd be astonishing if that... That would be more astonishing than anything that's happened uh, leading up to, uh, to uh, you know, the, the uh, potential court case. Well, I say potential because there could be a settlement, but the court case with the SEC versus sure. Like, this would be the most extreme ridiculous thing if it actually happened. So anyway, then John writes, um, as of right now, the SEC isn't asking for sanctions against Ripple, let alone retail holders of XRP. The SEC is seeking the disgorgement of the gains realized by Ripple and the two executives and pay civil penalties under Section 20D, which applies to control persons, and prohibit Ripple, Brad, and Chris from offering digital asset securities in the future. I hope this explains things for people. P please know that if you have submitted your name but now wish to be removed for any reason, that is perfectly okay. And so, look, if you're still concerned, you can get out of this. So you do whatever you want. I'm certainly not advising. Uh, you can you can be in this. You can not be in this. But um, based on what John Deaton has said here, I, I mean, I personally wouldn't be concerned, but I don't have a legal background, so I'm, that is definitely not any sort of advice. Not at all. 
Uh, but uh, there you go, straight from uh, from John Deaton. So. <laughs> Um, I'll go ahead and uh, wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.